Hello, my name is Martyr, and this is Let's Play Wolf the Red Hood Diaries, and thank you for watching. Wolf the Red Hood Diaries is, as they put it, a 2.5D action platforming game, guys. Uh, and the closest comparison that I could come up with when playing the game, guys, was it really kind of reminded me of Trine, kind of mixed up with a Lego game. Uh, it has really beautiful artwork, and there's puzzles. And you have that 3D element to where you're moving behind objects or in front of objects and you're climbing things and all that good kind of stuff. And there's combat as well. But it all feels really simple is the best way to describe it, guys. Uh, Wolf released May 2015, guys. It was developed and published by Grin. You can go ahead and get Wolf the Red Hood Diaries on Steam for $9.99. Which, if you ask me, is fair, I believe, for what you're getting here, guys. I think it's a fair price. Now guys, fairy tales are just story rich and always bring cool themes and elements to any game that they're in. If you want an example, I mean look at games like The Wolf Amongst Us, uh, and even Kingdom Hearts to a certain extent. It's kind of, it has a lot of fairy tale elements to it with worlds and stories and familiar things. They just bring you this gothic, dark creepiness sometimes to stories guys in really cool ways. And in every regard, Wolf kind of delivers on that. The, artwork is beautiful the story is kind of delivered to you in a really you know stylized way and i really like that about wolf it delivers in its audio and its music but when it comes to the gameplay there's just certain features and elements that needed more definition i feel and we'll we'll get on that more in a bit guys we're gonna go ahead and start off in the options of course guys and i will say there is a fair amount of options for you to kind of mess around with and deal with the game does feature 1080p resolutions um, it also has a lot of texture manipulation and, you know, multi-sampling and dynamic shadows and all good kind of stuff here that you can kind of mess around with and change things up a little bit. Of course, there's your usual sound sliders. There is voice overwork in this game, and it, it does a really good job, I feel, of voice overwork, but there's times where it can be a little bit... She kind of talks a lot, I won't say that much. Uh, the game does feature controller support. I'm going to say semi-controller support. Leaning again, obviously, you can see it right there, to the Xbox 360 crowd. Uh, but there's keyboard support here. I would not suggest playing it with the keyboard, though. It just doesn't feel right. You could tell the game was obviously meant for a controller. Even though all these keys are completely rebindable, um, it just it doesn't feel right is the best way to describe it. It's definitely, you want to play it with your controller, uh, if at all possible. You also got some other settings here, like subtitles, tooltips, all that good kind of stuff. Language, difficulty, UI scale, reset profile, etc., etc., etc. And that kind of covers it as far as options go. There is also in the form of a uh, diary, there's little goodies kind of hidden throughout the game, uh, which you can check out right here, which is kind of neat. I'd say I enjoy these little goodies that you can mess around with. I think they're kind of neat. And they're kind of hidden throughout the entire game. Uh, all these different kinds of little goodies give you a little bit of backgrounds or you know story or art it's really cool it's really well done and i like that a lot and it gives you a little bit of a little bit of replay value because you have to look for all those and find those uh and they're kind of rewarding if you really enjoy the lore and the style of the game so i'm gonna hit resume guys i'm playing the game for about an hour now uh and that's giving me a pretty good feel for what the game is like and what to expect um the story basically is, is that your father's dead uh, and you're trying to find out why he died or what happened and to what basically a certain extent. All you know is that a guy named B.B. Wolf was involved. Uh, it's a really stylized universe and I think it's very well done. I will say that much. Do I need to revert my axis? I do need to revert my axis. Gosh dang it. Now because uh, my controller is a Logitech controller, uh, it's not necessarily the most um, wonderful thing. I did not hit confirm. That was my problem right there. Let's go back to the options. I did hit confirm. Why is it not working? Uh, it is working. Okay, hold on. Oh, there we go. Okay. So basically, yeah, your father died. You know that BB Wolf was somehow involved, and you're kind of investigating that uh, while it's trying to avoid his robotic army, which I think we're going to find out a little bit more right here. Drawings, more often than in words. Charcoal was his mother tongue. He sketched the most beautiful stories I've ever heard. Now, one thing I will say is that the game is beautiful looking. When I said Trine, what I what I felt was kind of common with this game in Trine is that the art style is beautiful. There's details in every little nook and cranny of this little area. And as you kind of move around this 3D environment, it really shows that in a really gorgeous way. I mean, the way the light streams, just the way that that little doll right there, that little, you know, 
spinning thing looks. It just it's all really gorgeous Christ. looking, very neat. What and the graphics are really top it's notch, I feel like. For this game, it's really go gorgeous looking environments. Audio again, really well done. The voice acting is really good uh, for the most part. My thumb sized piece of comfort. I named her Grace. I'd forgotten all about Ballerina is what I was looking for. <laughs> she used to protect me from imaginary monsters. I hope she works her magic on real ones, too. So yeah, I mean, just audio-wise, visually-wise, it's top-notch. The voice acting, it, for me, it's going to be hit or miss. Sometimes she kind of talks a lot, uh, and it's not always necessary sometimes when she talks. So, you, like, she makes a jump, or she screams a lot when you fall. It's just, the voice acting is good at times, and it, it kind of misses at times as well. One thing I will say, though, is if you haven't noticed, is that everything Father's notes has a rhyme to scattered it. Scattered and fragmented, like his mind often was. Pinocchio, you rascal. I tell your story night after That's night. That's creepy looking as hell. If only my little girl knew how much you and I are alike. The that is creepy as balls strings looking. Attached, and an ever-growing nose to pay our dues. If only we could cut the cords. Am I a creator if what I create destroys? Is a toy still a toy on the devil's playground? It pays the bills. Now those little toy soldiers are the enemies that you face in the games. game here. Innocent people and me on the inside. Look at that, all that detail, how just beautiful the light bounces off of objects. It's just the the detail in the wood and the items, it's all really well done, I feel. I really like it a lot, the way everything looks in this game. And this is one of the more story-centric areas right now. This isn't what the... I can't show you how to jump or anything of the sorts like that right now. They're just kind of showing you different objects and how they all work and such. Uh, this is kind of you discovering more about your father, which I kind of already knew for one thing. Is that what I think it is? Uh, yes, it is. Did my father do what I think he did? He told me he designed toys. Well, this is hardly suitable for little girls and boys. <laughs> I just love the rhyming in this game. It's fantastic, the rhyming. Cadets, whom I've slaughtered by the dozen originate from your mind? This can't be true. This isn't you. This is not you. So there you go. She's made some revelations about her father. Oh, well. Did to keep exploring life. around here? After careful consideration, I've decided to resign from my function at Wolf Industries. I hereby give you my two weeks' notice. Sincerely, Joseph R. Hood. So father quit? I didn't have a clue. Wolf Spoilers. must have really screwed his mind. If only we knew. You can skip some of the dialogue if you want, by the way. Uh, but I don't see why you would ever want to skip that. That's when father died. No. I don't know why you would ever want to skip the dialogue in this game, guys. It's really well done. It's, like I said, there's a really good feel of the universe. The game does a really good job of, of presenting the universe and getting you involved. Like I said, fairy tales are always a good place for, you know, good themes and good storytelling. And I think Wolf delivers on that regard really, really well. So we're gonna, I think we're going to go into the actual game now. Kind of the more action puzzle solving elements. So much for going unnoticed. Change of plan. Let's play. Catch me if you can. All right. So I guess we're going to be running a lot. And here is probably where you, I'm going to get frustrated quite a bit because in this game there is what I like to call a lot of instant fail state scenarios, which these guys are the kings of. If you notice, they all have like these maces kind of running with electricity. If I were to let any of these dudes land a shot on me, watch. Game over. This game, while it is really fun, I like it a lot, it is instant state failure of the game. If you fall in water, it's game over. There's a lot of just ways that this is just game over in a lot of regards. Uh, and it's just, they're bountiful, the fail state scenarios. Which, how the hell did they just run through that wood there? That doesn't seem fair. That doesn't seem fair in the least, sir. So right now we're just kind of running away from these guys. Oh my goodness. Oh, that was, that was lucky of me. Oh my goodness. We're going to keep running this way, hopefully. Oh, we made it. There, we did it, right? We're safe? Holy crap. Nope, I'm screwed. Whoa. Holy crap. I did not expect to make that. But I didn't make that. Did I make that? I don't know. They hit me. 
I think because I ran into the next checkpoint, it counts. <laughs> the jumping, I will say the controls in the game are pretty smooth. The platforming is hit or miss. There's times where the camera, which you can't adjust by the way, uh, can kind of block your view and it's hard sometimes to determine where it is to, you have to land and jump. But again, to be honest with you, even if you do die a lot, which you will do in this game, uh, it does a really pretty good job of instantly reloading pretty much for the most part. So let's talk about the things you can actually do in this game. Obviously you can double jump, which you've already just seen here. There's a roll button. There's an attack button with a heavy button and a light attack. There's a light attack, which is that right there. And there's a heavy attack, which more or less looks the exact same, exact same every time you hit the button. Uh, you can sprint, you can sneak, which you can be like, oh, I need to get past certain enemies. You can also slide by, excuse me, by running and then actually hitting the, uh, the sneak button at the same time, which is how they expect you to get past certain obstacles there. And like I said, the controls for the most part are pretty responsive, pretty smooth, pretty good. There's also like this magic button. You see those little blue bottles on the top left there? Well, that basically represents kind of like a magic meter. Uh, and you can act 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 excuse me activate those uh, and it gives you like kind of like a powerful attack basically the red bottle is your health by the way as you can imagine so let's keep exploring around here actually this would be a good opportunity for me to show you how the magic works so uh, press the LB button to, together to form an axe throw okay left button left bumper okay am I missing something here uh, what? did you see that? Didn't know I had that trick up my sleeve. So basically, yeah, you can see there's little different attacks that you can use with your magic. Uh, so like, for instance, they just gave me access to this one just now. Which basically um, allows me to kind of throw my axe. And we can recharge that by collecting these little blue orbs. Like I said, it, it, to be honest, the combat really reminds me of kind of like a Lego game. And I don't mean that necessarily in a derisive way. I mean, it's just the combat's very simplistic. You can kind of run around in circles and the enemy will kind of mindlessly chase you. They're not exactly too intelligent. Um, it, it's just simplistic combat, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. I mean, it, it's not bad, it's just simplistic. Like I said, it's not the world's worst thing. It's just very simplistic. Uh, I just collected a big glowing W. Those are little, like I said, collectibles that you can find hidden throughout the game. I don't know if I'm gonna get to kill all these guys. I probably just sneak past them. Sneaky, sneak, sneak, sneak. Sneaky, sneak, sneak, sneak. I could fight these guys, but you know, there's areas where you just necessarily don't necessarily, don't necessarily child, want to. You can I just walk right past them. Like them. But they were tiny, with missing limbs, and meant no harm. I still cannot believe these killer ten creations arose from my father's imagination. <laughs> Did he really get used to it, sister? Just to make sure I could eat. Okay, crap. I thought that was something I was supposed to jump onto. Nope, nope, totally dead, okay. Uh, water, by the way, of course, is the world's greatest enemy in this game. Oh, for God's sakes. And this is one thing I will say you will run into a lot. If you die and you haven't hit a checkpoint, uh, which will I'll show you eventually what checkpoints look like, it's basically you have to redo everything all over again, which can be really frustrating. Uh, I completely just missed that guy. Yes, I was trying to do that. Did you see that? Didn't know I had that trick up my sleeve. Okay, I'm confused here. What's going on? Right, let's try it again. I don't think I did the attack right there. Let's try it again. Am I out of magic juice? Is that what's going on here? I think that's what is going on here. Yeah, I'm out of magic juice. That's okay though. But yeah, you'll run into a lot of scenarios where you're going to have to kind of backtrack a lot. Uh, which can get slightly frustrating. Like I said, the, the checkpoints in this game are a blessing and a curse pretty much at the exact same time. Yeah, I mean, it was kind of stupid of me to jump off of it. Uh, I won't say that much, but I was just kind of see if there was little hidden collectibles anywhere. There's a lot of times where there's a lot of instant death scenarios that you don't really necessarily have any control over. Uh, and you have to backtrack through them over again, kind of repeat them over and over again until you figure out what it is you need to get done. Uh, it, it's frustrating at times. It's not necessarily... It can be very frustrating, you know, whereas a Lego game, if you die, you instantly respawn right next to wherever you died. This one, you know, game flashes down, it reloads, it brings you back to wherever your last checkpoint is. Which, by the way, these are the checkpoints look like. The little baskets. Uh, you basically can collect them. Now, if I were to die now, I'd instantly respawn to this particular point. I'm going to take out these guys, because I can. Apparently, I killed Ralph and James. I, get, maybe that's, I think that's probably... People who donated to the game's cause and helped it 
get kickstarted. And the, like I said, the combat's just really simplistic. You kind of just mash your buttons, either strong attack or your your light attack. It's not necessarily the world's greatest you know combat system. It's simplistic. It's not a bad combat system. It's just very simplistic. Like I said, it kind of reminds me of Trine or Lego in that regard. That it wasn't isn't necessarily the focus of uh, of the game itself. There. There we go. They're dead. Maurice and the Mad 78 have been murdered brutally. Okay, well, there you go. Uh, right now, like I said, it, there's really cool elements to it. I enjoy the fact that everything's kind of, as they put it, 2.5D. You can kind of move around these areas, uh, and you're kind of moving your way forward from left to right in a very simplistic way, but I think it's really, really well done. Did I miss that back there? Possible that I missed that back there? I don't know. That's a checkpoint we're coming towards. There's a little glowing W back there. I want to see if I can get my hands on that. Maybe if we just move along this way and we'll get it. Uh, we'll just go this way. Let's see if we can hack this in half. Can we hack this? No, we can't hack this. We can't. Can we jump over it? No, we can't jump over it. Can we jump to that boat over there? Aha, there we go. Perfect. So we landed that jump. We collected that W there. A lot more diary unlocks. More little, you know, art, concept art, things like that. Uh, and like I said, the platforming is okay in this game. It's not the most sharpest thing in the world. Uh, I'm thinking I have to get over these guys. So maybe I can just run past them. You don't even necessarily have to fight enemies. You can just avoid them if you want. You don't have to fight them. There's a Pied Piper! Well, look who's decided to re-enter the race. Hey, All right. where do you think you're going? So he blew his pipe and apparently blew that up. Face. That's a powerful pipe there. He can blow some pipes. The game does feature steamy goodness. I should mention that. Uh, steam cards, steam achievements, all that good kind of stuff, guys, is there for you to enjoy. Uh, and the game is, I will say for the most part, kind of bug-free. I haven't ran into any bugs. I, I wouldn't call bad camera angles a bug. I would just say that's just part of the, you know, the platforming aspect of things. Sometimes the jumps are easy. Sometimes they're hard to predict where you have to land. Uh, and like I said, there's a lot, a lot of instant death scenarios in this game. If you're not a fan of instant death scenarios, you're going to get really frustrated because there's a lot of times you're just you know, dead instantly. Also, I've noticed all. that the falling height that's in this game, it's not always easy to determine where you know the falling distance is. I've had a red die kind of stupidly a, a, a couple times where she's just falling from an extreme height. Yes, take this! Right now I'm just mashing the, uh, the attack button. Really simplistic collect all these little golden baubles here. Uh, there's been a couple times where I've just... The, the fall height isn't necessarily easy to determine. Uh, he'll fall to your death. But I mean, otherwise, like I said, the game is gorgeous looking. I will say that much. There is three difficulties in the game, by the way. What the hell? This guy is like a super soldier. He killed me! Holy crap! That guy took a lot of damage. I should have determined by the fact that he was glowing gold that there was something different about him. Alright, we're going to use magic this time, so... We're gonna use magic on him, and then we're gonna go. Yeah, yeah, we hit you. And we're gonna do it again. Yeah, why is he not paying attention to the fact that I'm whacking him? Okay, right, run away! Run away! Run away! Like I said, the enemies are kind of dumb. Um, they're not necessarily the world's smartest enemies in this game. It's, it, like I said, it's a very simplistic combat system. There we go. Did we kill him? Did we, is the general down yet? No, he's not down yet. Good God. There we go. We killed that bastard finally. So he's dead, and I guess we've basically kind of accomplished something here. Can we go into this shop here? No, I, this isn't where we're going? No, that's not where we're going. Uh, but yeah, like I said, it's a really simplistic game. It has all the elements that you would want for it. Like I said, that's why I think $9.99 was kind of a fair price. Because it, it's a simplistic game. The combat's simplistic. Uh, I think we can sneak past these guys. We're kind of falling into the stairs there. It's kind of funny. Uh, like I said, just sometimes the camera angles can be a little bit brutal. You don't necessarily know what angle to make jumps at. Or for instance, like where we got stuck there, I had to kind of like turn the camera and see where I was heading towards. Um, I think we can go upwards. Is that what we want to do? Why do I want to go up here? Do I want to jump up here? Do I want to jump up here? No, this is pointless. What is the point of this? Why is this here? There's also a lot of invisible walls I've noticed in this game as well. Like areas like this, you'll notice that there's just lots of areas where you can kind of get caught or clipped on invisible walls. And that can also affect jumping as well. So, because like if I thought, hey, I could just make this jump from this corner down to that platform down there. It's not 
gonna let you do that. It, it, it depends on where the invisible walls lie, basically. I think we have no choice but to fight these guys. Yeah, no, we have no choice. Or we can just avoid them, I guess. Where, where am I supposed to go, game? Where do you want me to go? Yeah, fine, I'll kill these bastards. Oh my god, he's hitting me so hard. Oh, I'm dead. I'm dead. I got killed. Snap. Oh, and we have to go all the way back to where we were. So again, this is just kind of an example of what I was talking about. Just sometimes having to go through this, you know, content over and over again. Can we just sneak past these guys while they see me? No, he's going to see me no matter what I do. Maybe we won't get this way. Ha ah. ha No, maybe? Anyways, two things to note, guys, is the game's length and its ending. The game's length, from what I've read, is about two to three hours at the most. It's not a very long game, so just keep that in mind. As far as the ending goes, it's satisfactory. I mean, this is part one of two, but it does kind of leave things on a cliffhanger, so just kind of expect that when you're playing this game here, guys. There we go, he's dead. That wasn't too many attacks there. Bye, guys! Bye, guys! How dare you hit me? You bastard robot. Uh, and another, another thing important to note is that this is the um, first of a two-part series. How do you get that? Am I supposed to smash my way through this? Maybe, okay, I think I see it. Just go down and around. Ah, ah. There we go. Okay. So let's try this again. We'll try this one more time. Then we'll probably wrap up this video because I think we've pretty much gotten a really good idea of what to expect from this game. Uh, we'll try to sneak through this area again. Like I said, the combat's simplistic. The platforming is simplistic. Uh, there's not too many complicated elements to this game, to be honest with you. I think we have to kill these guys. Let's just kill them. Are we going to kill them? Kill this guy first. He's the weakest. I got hit there. Heck. He's hitting me. He's hitting me. The coward is hitting me. Die, would you? There we go. So I guess we did have to kill those guys. Uh, as we get through this door here. Uh, and I think that's pretty much just going to cover it. Like I said, the game's gorgeous looking. It's really gorgeous looking. The platforming is simplistic, the combat's simplistic, there's a lot of things I like about it. I've also noticed that with these particular enemies right here, which are rats, you can kind of end up bouncing on the tops of enemies' heads, which is kind of hilarious, and it can be a little bit frustrating at times as well. There is bosses in this game, and obviously loads of puzzles for you to do. Uh, let's see what's up ahead here, we're going to have to fight these guys. We roll away! Roll away! Low on health, health regenerates over time by the way. Uh, there's three difficulties for you to enjoy, but basically all those change is the, um, the number of good god in heaven. It's the number of hit points the enemies have, uh, which can be... Like I said, because the combat's kind of simplistic. I want to show you that you can bounce on enemies' heads here. Kind of like this. It's kind of hilarious. And they're still hitting me, by the way. They're still nomming on my ass. Uh, it just makes you helpless. It doesn't make them helpless. It's a little frustrating at times. Like I said, it's a simplistic game. There's just certain elements, certain features that need more definition, need a little bit more complexity to them. Um, and I think they would have just worked a little bit better on the, the platforming aspects. The, the so many instant death scenarios or instant failure scenarios can be a little bit frustrating at times. Um, but again, I think the overall art style, <clears throat> the overall graphics, the overall story, the overall voice acting, the, the way things are told kind of outweighs that stuff and, and, it, and I think it gives the game a favorable outlook and again this is volume one of two so hopefully in part two they'll fix up some more of the issues and define things a little bit better it's a fun game I think it's a really fair price I think you will enjoy it uh and, and I'll play it for the gorgeous graphics play it for the story play it for the setting because it's really well done and it's a pretty fun game all in all so I just want to say big thanks to the developer for a chance to check out this title. Thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe and share, guys, and I'll keep bringing you awesome indie games, guys. If you really enjoyed this video, maybe consider hitting up that tip jar. If you're feeling generous of heart, all tips go to improving the channel or future giveaways. Till next time, guys, play more indie games.